As a leader, one of the things you may have to deal with in your job at some point is an angry employee. Let's face it, having the job of a leader can have a lot of really positive aspects, but one of the things that most of us like to deal with least is someone who feels angry, irritable, overwhelmed, and stressed. Now, this can look like anything from somebody with quiet anger to somebody who is created outbursts or had outbursts in the office, somebody who uh, can even come across as volatile. So today I want to share a few suggestions for how you can deal in the moment when an angry employee approaches you. Now let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is just even recognize that when someone comes to you and they're feeling particularly stressed, overwhelmed, or angry, there are going to be a few signs that you'll quickly see in them that they're feeling particularly worked up. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who is feeling rational and can sit down and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about a problem I'm having. I'm talking about somebody who's coming at you with a lot of emotion. You might see large body behavior, arms out, fists up, even if they're not in a fighting stance, this is just something as humans that we do a loud voice, very impactful, very loud, maybe not professional language. But before you even assess all of that, you're going to have a feeling within you. And that feeling is your fight or flight system. It's going to instantly get engaged when you see someone angry approaching you. So one of the hardest steps that I'm gonna to share today is what you're gonna do right here in the beginning. And that is, even as you feel your fight or flight system, even when you feel that immediate anxiety rise in front and within you, excuse me, or perhaps your own anger, anxiety or anger, either of those responses is very normal. Um, when you have somebody angry approaching you, you're going to feel an instant desire to either fight back, so to get bigger, stronger, and hold your ground, to use some tough love with that employee. That could be one instant response that you feel. Um, or you could feel, number two, a, a, a desire to flee, to avoid the argument, to put it off, to say, hey, come back when you're calm or I don't have time right now. Or three, you might freeze. So that is a very common response. It's not often talked about when we're faced with somebody who's angry or we feel threatened in any way. So you may have that intuition to freeze. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to acknowledge that your flight or fight system might be kicking in, but to stay calm. Now, this is really important because if someone is very angry when they're approaching you, when your employee is very angry when they're approaching you, and you get worked up in any way, either getting anxious, fearful, and wanting to flee the situation, getting angry and confrontational yourself, or simply freezing, it can make the situation worse, right? So obviously if you're angry and you decide to hold your ground and have a very firm voice with them, that could escalate their anger as well. If you are feeling fearful or anxious and you want to flee or avoid the situation, again, that could escalate the situation. They could feel that they're being disregarded, invalidated, or ignored. And in the third choice, the freezing, this is a little bit tougher one. I will definitely admit that because that is a very primal thing that can happen within us. But if we freeze in a situation like that, it can look like a lot of different things to the angry person. It can look like we're not responding, we're not really listening, we're not uh, taking them seriously. So although these are very natural reactions, it is important to remain very calm and open in this kind of situation. Now, some things you can do is to immediately put yourself on the same level as that person. So if you're sitting, stand up. If they're standing, if they're sitting, which likely they won't be, usually when people are angry and worked up, they wanna be standing. Um, but if they are sitting, go ahead and sit down. Now, be mindful of how much space is between you and the other person. You don't want them to feel cornered. You don't want them to feel attacked. Uh, some of us will feel like we need to kind of get close to someone to help them calm down, maybe put an arm on them, but you actually want to make sure they feel like they have enough personal space. So get onto their level, take some deep breaths. This can help instantly calm your fight or flight system. And this is really important. Again, you want to stay really calm, very level-headed, and be ready for the next step. So take some deep breaths from your stomach, from your belly, 
and just allow yourself to feel calmer for a moment. Now, when you're doing this, when you're calming yourself down, you are also modeling for the other person that you're staying in the space, you're staying with them, you're not escalating, and you're staying calm. Now, be very mindful at this point of your body language. You do not want to do what may feel instinctual, which is to cross your arms. This is sort of a protective kind of body language that we tend to naturally gravitate towards if we're feeling intimidated or alarmed by something in our environment. But when you close your arms, you are closing yourself off. So be mindful to keep your shoulders back and down, keep your arms open. Now, next is your hands. So again, when we're stressed, we do tend to, we can bring our hands together, we might start to do some of this, or we might make this again, not because we're getting ready to fight, but because we're feeling very intimidated or threatened. Uh, so you want to be really mindful of your hands and actually keep them open. So having open palms, um, I talk a lot with my hands, so this is really very comfortable for me, but this is something that you can practice is keeping open body language and open palms, very non-threatening, but also not feeling like you are um, withdrawing from the, the conversation that is about to be um, had with this person, right? So it's about to take place. So that's the first thing, is you're going to stay calm, open body language, and get on their level. Now, the second thing you're going to do is, as soon as you have a moment to speak, what we want to do is take them out of this highly emotional state and try to bring some of that down. So what you're going to do when they've paused a moment is say, wow, I can see that you're very upset and I really would appreciate the opportunity to understand what's going on. Would that be okay with you? Now, most of the time they're immediately gonna say yes. Some people may not take that as genuine, but for the most part, most people are gonna say, yes, I want you to understand, I am really upset. Now, the second part of that is if they've given you permission, then say, well, then if you don't mind, can we slow down so I can hear everything you have to say? Because this sounds really important. So I want to make sure I hear every word. Now, again, you're delivering this with a very calm voice, a very even voice, and you're letting them know, I want to hear every word you have to say. That immediately puts somebody in a lower state of activation because they don't feel they have to fight to be heard. So they can bring it down a few notches, allow that energy to drop and lower the intensity. Now, if they say no and they do not give you permission to try to understand, then a better response could be, okay, so I think this is really important and I really wanna be able to understand, is there a better time that we could talk about this? I really wanna be able to hear everything, but I'll tell you the truth, when we're yelling, it's really hard for me to hear everything. So is there a better way that we could do this? So just ask them. Now, with that question, you are giving them an option, which feels very good to somebody who's highly activated, but you're also helping them disengage a little of the emotional part of their brain and engage a little in the problem solving part because now they have to try to transition to thinking about when's a better time to have this conversation. Um, so that is a way to respond if they say no. Now, most likely they're going to say yes. They're going to want to be heard. They came to you for a reason. So once you've gotten permission, if you're both standing, that is a great time to say, would it be okay if we both sat down? Cause I really want to just tune into you. I really want to listen to, to your words. And that again helps lower the energy. Right, so immediately when we sit, we're gonna have a little bit lower energy. So have them sit, again, maintaining enough personal space so that they have room to move and gesture and not feel like they're being closed in by your presence, right? If this is a public situation, you're in the middle of a bunch of cubicles or out in the hallway, offer, you know, I, I'd love to hear everything you have to say and I want you to feel comfortable speaking. Do you mind if we step into the conference room? So. You know, my advice is if there is a room that is larger, that's going to feel a lot less closed in, a lot less claustrophobic when someone's feeling angry and overwhelmed, go for a larger space, cafeteria, break room, a conference room, any room where there's more space. 
Now, it is unlikely that you have to think of safety concerns in a situation like this. But if for some reason you did feel like there could be a safety concern, of course, having a larger space to talk in would be appropriate. But, you know, honestly, if there's a safety concern, probably the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure there are other people around and that there is some help being sought out to assist with the situation. Going back to our scenario, if we don't have one of those extreme situations, now we're sitting in a room with enough space, hopefully, or in a room, even if it's smaller, kind of a few feet apart, you know, about six feet apart will do it. Now, it would be best if you don't have something very large between you, like a desk if possible, because that way you can show open and relaxed body language. But if you can't avoid it, that's okay as well. Now, we've gotten to the part where we have op used open body language, we've used our very calm voice, we've let the other person know, I do wanna hear everything you have to say. And now, probably, most likely, they have calmed down a bit, their activation has come down enough that you too can have a conversation, which may still have some energy behind it, but certainly has come down a bit by now. Now, the next part is going to be engaging your active listening skills. And this is very important because now you're actually gonna do what you said you were gonna do and you are gonna listen to them speak. Now, with active listening, we're going to allow them time to speak. They can say as much as they want and you are there to listen. Now, when they pause, because there will usually be parts in the conversation where they're explaining themselves but they pause, you're gonna use a couple different techniques to let them know you're listening and also to help you listen better, right? So you're actually retaining the information that they're saying. So different kinds of techniques you can use are, number one, summarizing. So when they've paused, you can say something like, I wanna make sure I got that. Do you mind if I summarize your words back to you just to make sure I got that? And then in your own words, paraphrase what they said. Again, this is helping them know you're listening, you're tuned in, that they are the focus of your attention, and it gives them a chance to clarify information. Now, you can, in this situation, again, somebody's coming to you in an angry state, you can use language that is not as certain. And what I mean by that is, you can say things like, I think what I heard you say is this, but please let me know if I got anything wrong. Or you could say something like, I'd like to repeat back what I heard, but please feel free to let me know if any of that was off. I'd love to hear exactly what you're thinking and feeling. So let me know if any of that is off. And that gives the person a chance, permission to know that you're not trying to be perfect. You're not trying to pretend you get what they're feeling because they may not think you can understand right away anyway, and that they have a chance to then further clarify. Now, another technique you can use, but you wanna use it judiciously, is to repeat back what they've said. So if they say, I tried to talk to Susan, but she wasn't listening to me, you could say back, she wasn't listening to you. And all you're doing is repeating back the last two or three words, so again, they know that you're listening. Now, this can start to sound like you're parroting, so you use this one a little less frequently, but again, it's a way to let them know that you are listening. So those are a couple techniques for active listening. Now, as far as body language at this point, you are remaining open, shoulders back and down, hands open, right? Um, if you need to cross your legs, that's more comfortable. That's typically not an issue as long as your upper body language is open and facing the person. You want to try to keep your face relaxed, but attentive. So you may turn your head to the right, that is, tends to be a listening gesture or lean in very slightly. So again, keeping that open and relaxed body language. Now, the last part of this that I want to share with you is after you have gone through this phase. Now, this could take quite a bit of time. It really just depends on the situation and the person. It may take a while for them to feel like they fully shared everything and that you've summarized back and you truly have a clear picture of what is going on. The next step you're going to do is validate and move into solution phase. So first validating, 
I hear you, this is what happened, and this is why you're so upset. So validation is acknowledgement. It is not agreeing with the other person. Really important difference. You want to acknowledge what you've heard, acknowledge their feelings, do it in a very serious way or taking them seriously, but you are not agreeing with them. It may not be appropriate for you to agree. It may not be something um, that is agreeable. And even if it is, even if you can completely see it as a leader, you do need to stay impartial. So I hear you, this is what happened and it's been very upsetting for you. So acknowledge their feelings. Now, there are a couple different kinds of ways you could go with the solution focused phase of this procedure. And the first could be if it is appropriate to engage them in the solution focused phase by asking them, you know, now that I understand what's going on, I wonder if you'd like to partner with me as we think through some next steps we could take here. Again, you are the only person in this moment who is going to be able to decide if that is an appropriate question. Now, this can be very empowering for employees. If this is a conflict between two employees or something where you feel that it could actually come to a positive resolution, giving them a chance to help with the solution phase is very empowering and it helps them feel like they can take ownership of the situation. Third, it can also help them develop some problem solving skills that would help them if anything like this happens again. But you do need to make a really intentional decision about whether or not partnering with them on Solution Focus is the right choice. Now, there's also a choice where it is not the right choice for them to be part of the solution. And in this case, you would need to convey to them, now that I've heard everything that's going on and I can understand the gravity of the situation, I will need to speak to X, Y, or Z, you know, whoever it may be, so that we can figure out how best to come to a resolution here that's going to work for you. So again, very validating, be very clear with what your next step is, and then let them know, and I will get back to you at this time. If you can, make sure that time isn't too far into the future. You want them to feel like you are following up. The thing is, being angry in any situation, whether it's justified or not, is a very stressful place to be. And you don't want your employee to stay in a heightened stress state for any longer than necessary. So if you can let them know reasonably that you can get back to them in the next day or so, that would be a lot better than say, you know, I'll get back to you next week or I have a lot on my plate. We don't want to in any way invalidate them. So those are my steps for dealing or managing an angry employee. Now, hopefully you'll never need to use these steps, but the longer you are in your leadership role, the more likely these steps might be coming in handy for you. So I'd love to hear some feedback, or if you have any questions about the steps I've shared, please leave them in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next video.